The haters can't see me, the money's in the way. Hey guys, what's up? It's Gina, welcome back to the channel. It is very dark in here, so I'm gonna lose these. We've got another episode of the trash reality show, Marrying Millions, season two, episode four. Let's check up on our favorite creepy codependent couple, Bill and Bree. Last time we saw them was the day after Bree's birthday party, having a little couple's quarrel regarding Kathleen, Bill's ex-wife. After I saw that Bree's mom and my ex-wife had the little showdown. A little showdown? They exchanged like a total of 10 words with each other and walked away. Being rude doesn't get you anywhere. No one even yelled. Kathleen didn't even get her weave ripped out. It was at best a brief encounter that was slightly aggressive. Bill has another ingenious plan and wants to invite Kathleen, Bree, and Bree's parents to dinner since it's so important that they work things out because... Kathleen is the mother of my children. And there's a scene where Bill, the fashionista, is helping Bree pick out an outfit for that dinner. You need to be semi-conservative. But not just any outfit. Because Kathleen is conservative, but classy. An outfit that is gonna impress his ex-wife. Something that maybe gives you a little bit of age. What, do you want her to wear a moon? It's really pissing me off how Bill cares so much about what Kathleen thinks of me. Bray, calm down. It is totally normal for your boyfriend to reprimand what you wear to appease his ex. You're just not accustomed to it growing up poor. I have to change and be appropriate for her. That's not toxic. That's just rich people shit, okay? If you wear a summer dress in the winter time, Kathleen might snicker about that. Winter? But what's wrong with it? A summer dress in the winter time? Bill, shut the fuck up. I've lived in Texas for like five years. They're like two weeks of winter. It's a dress. We dress for the seasons, honey. That's what people do. Oh, thanks, daddy. The seasons. You know what the seasons are in Texas? Warm, hot, and really fucking hot. I'm not trying to be critical of Bree's wardrobe. Sure hope not, because you're the one who paid for it all. Kathleen's gonna be looking at Bree, and Kathleen's gonna be judging Bree. Hey, Bill, does Kathleen see the outfits you think you can pull off? <laughs> Maybe that's the real reason she divorced you. This is an opportunity to win her over. Yes, dearest, not only must you dress to my ex-wife's liking, but you also must win over her affection. She must accept you as her sister-wife. Our relationship is not based off of her. She's the mother of my children. Yes, Bill, we know she's the mother of your children. And once again, why wouldn't you focus on the relationship between your children and Bree? For us to be a big, happy family, we all need to want it. And from what I'm seeing, Kathleen doesn't want it. Kathleen doesn't want to be my sister wife. All right, so it's the night of the dinner. Bree's a little nervous. She's really hoping her mom is going to be on her best behavior. But knowing her, possible that it could go the other way around. Yeah, she's just like more of a break a wine glass and shank a bitch kind of gal. <laughs> I don't understand why Bill's bringing us together. Yeah, neither does anyone else. Oh, okay, so she goes with the bedazzled tracksuit. When you got dinner with a Dallas housewife at seven, but going for a jog at eight. I want you to give Kathleen a chance. No. Hard no, because I'm your potential mother-in-law, and I don't want to be buddies with your ex-wife. I don't like her. Look at Bree's mom wearing floral. How could I possibly break bread with someone who isn't dressed for the seasons? And here comes Queen Bee strutting down the street. Wow, she would 100% fail a sobriety test. <laughs> I'm going to be polite, but I'm also not going to be attacked. That's the Dallas housewife way. How are you? Good. If there was no conflict to discuss, what do you think these people would be talking about over dinner? I seriously sat down and racked my brain trying to think of something that they would have in common. And the only legitimate answer I could come up with is Texas, because people from Texas love talking about Texas. Cherry, you were a little rude. I was a bitch. God, I love Bree's mom. She just cuts to the motherfucking chase. That was very offensive. I don't care. But, well, I feel but wait a second, Sherry. Yeah, Kathleen, just slug it down while you wait for that Xanax to kick in. She is the mother of my children. Oh my God, why does he keep saying it? Bill, we fucking know. She is the mother of my children. She's the mother of my children. The mother of my children. What if somebody did that to your daughter and you would get up in there? Right? No, I wouldn't. No, 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 Sharon. You see, when your plastic surgeon tells you that your nose might collapse after your fourth rhinoplasty, you just don't take those types of risks. 
I'll just go ahead and talk a bunch of shit behind their back instead. I'm trying to be like the big sister. Uh, what did I tell you? They're trying to make Brie Kathleen's sister wife. The big sister. You look like you are very yellow. I'm not a jealous person. No, no, no. You see, I've already secured my bag. You think I miss that? Well, you look like you still love, uh, still in love with Bill. I love Bill. Bill's alimony payments. But I'm not in love with Bill. So then Bill's father asks why Kathleen and Bill got a divorce. Because he was a cheater. Oh my God. Shut the fuck up, Mom. I'm securing the bag. Why did you do that? Well, I don't think monogamy is natural. He's totally right. Cheating can be justified because polyamorous relationships aren't even a thing. I wasn't expecting to like Bree's mom. She tells it like it is. If I find out you're cheating on Bree, I'm gonna, I'm gonna f you up. <laughs> I've done prison. You've been in prison? Yeah. You in have? prison? Oh, come on, guys. Don't act all surprised that she served time. Like, really? But wait, he's, he's <laughs> you knew. I never killed anyone. That's not why I went to prison. Yeah, it was just a little bit of meth. I'm satisfied. Ooh. Is that not a good word? Like, it's a horrible word. I need to work, look for a better word in the dictionary. No, you need a thesaurus, Grandpa Bill. I feel like I look calm on the outside, but on the inside, I feel like there's bombs going off. No, girl, you don't look calm at all. Next up, we got Dee and her BFF, Rodney. Last time we saw them, Dee was a little irritated and stormed out. It seems like he wants to still keep this big secret. So now she's back in LA. Her and Rodney haven't spoken for a few weeks. Hey, how's it going? Looking cute, drinking some wine in bed, waiting for him to Zoom her. That is the move, sis. There's something wrong here. I'm just saying maybe her gaydar needs like a battery replacement. It smells like a duck, walk like a duck, is it duck? Quack, quack, quack. What do ducks smell like? I, I don't think I've ever smelled one before. I want to make sure that everybody's gonna be comfy. Like what's wrong with me? Girl, nothing's wrong with you. You just, you got the innie parts, not the outie parts. I'm a little nervous about introducing Desiree to my mom right now because she's very conservative. Girl doesn't even have premarital sex. I would say that's pretty conservative. Well, if I don't introduce you to my parents, then what? She she has given him an ultimatum that she must meet his family or it's over. But let me think about it. Let me talk to my mom. He just doesn't get it. No, girl. I don't think you're getting it. So Rodney invites his mother over for some wine to clue her in that he's seeing someone. We never had that type of mother-son relationship. And I just want her to be proud of me. Oh, no, Rodney. Why are you crying, boo-boo? The only cast member I want to see cry is Kevin. So who you been hanging out with here lately? I do have one, you know, friend I've been hanging out with. No, but really, that's not even far from the truth. He's literally just been hanging out with his friend. Really? Yeah. Her? Is it a her or a he? Why you look like that? Like what? I like this. I do suspect that there is something that he doesn't want to tell me about. What? She basically just said it without saying it. It'll be a time that he need to tell me. She knows. She, she knows. Mom always knows. So then she tells Rodney she's hosting dinner next week and he better be there with his new thing. She's not even new. It's been two years. She literally tells us all the time. <laughs> all right, the next couple up we have not met yet. I'm Danny. Really Lifetime, one of her first intro shots is a close up of her ass. I'm 25 years old and I live in McKinney, Texas. So Danny here grew up in Juarez, Mexico and moved to the States at the age of seven. There's a lot of poverty, drugs. All right, girl, we get it. You got some street cred. I came from poor. I've seen it all. Did you see it all before the age of seven? She works for her real estate investor boyfriend, Donovan, aka Jimmy or Drake Jr. My current net worth is anywhere from 10 to 15 million. The two live together in this beautiful home in McKinney, Texas. God damn it. It's dark out now. Gotta get my fucking ring light out. Guys, I don't care what you say. I I am so good at YouTube. Just as hard as like the day I first met you. Yeah, like good job not getting fat once we got comfortable. She'd always leave me on red. They attended high school together and Danny was never interested and went off to college. When Donovan found out she came home for a visit, he once again hit up her DMs and asked her out on a date and she agreed. Starts telling me a little bit about what he's been doing and it's just like, Sign me up. Uh, okay, that's probably not the best way to put that. I went from driving a baby blue Toyota Yaris to nice car. To a nice car. You don't get to know which car it is, but no, it is a nice car. Danny is pretty materialistic. So we learned that Danny is a bit of a shopaholic. She has maxed out his credit card multiple times. Happens pretty, pretty often. And if that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. What if I don't have money? Would she still be there? Uh, 
Danny, her mother, and her sister go on a little shopping spree. I actually know Danny's sister, Carla, through mutual friends. We've partied together in Austin. I initially reached out to her and she agreed to do an interview with me about the show, but I warned her, I'm like, look over the contract. We don't want you breaching it at all. I never heard back from her, which is probably for the best because in the long run, she probably wouldn't have appreciated the things I said about her sister, even though it's all in good fun. Interesting connection that I wanted to share with you guys. Don's covering most of my shopping nowadays. So then we learned that Danny is making roughly 500 bucks a week working for Don. I mean, obviously 500 bucks can't really cover anything. I mean, there are plenty of people out there that work for 500 bucks a week and they make that work, so. I think it's time to really start well, I, working I on your financial independence. So Danny is ready to make her pitch to Don that she deserves more than $500 a week. And if Don says no to a raise, then we're gonna have a problem. Oh, you're gonna have a problem? What, what, are, you, what are you gonna do about it? Cause he's your boss and you live with him. So you're probably just gonna like huff and puff a little bit and that'll be the end of that. I feel like I'm running around tired, like doing all these things, but babe, like, I don't really feel like I can grow. Like I, you know, like, like money wise too. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Oh my God, this is such a fake conversation. But you make good money. <laughs> Says the multi-millionaire. Do I really make good money? Yeah. What is that, like $13 an hour? Yeah. 500 bucks a week? I'm pretty sure Chick-fil-A employees make at least 15. Guess who overperforms and gets underpaid? Like, hello? Babe. Me. Babe, it's me. He's trying so hard not to laugh. You don't pay any bills at all. That uh, is a pretty sweet deal in her case. There's nowhere else in the world you can go and have the lifestyle that you have. Being the best thing for us to work separate. Why is she crying too? What are these producers like? Poke them in the eye. You're asking for too much. All right, guys. Well, that about does it. As you can see, my ponytail is like significantly lower than where it started. So that probably means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did. Do your girl a solid and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye!